Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is going to be my mid-month wrap up for April and I think I've got 16 books to talk to you about today. So just real quick, I wanted to kind of mention a few things before getting into the wrap up. So I did actually just recently pass 500 subscribers. So thank you all so much. That's just like super cool to, you know, have my channel keep growing and I really appreciate all of you. Um, and then the other thing, like, I feel like I keep mentioning this <laughs> at the beginning of basically like every video lately, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I have been wanting to try to get back into like posting two videos a week and lately it's just been really hard to do that. And, you know, like I've got a big presentation coming up next week for my prelim. It's almost a bigger deal than the, uh, the defense itself because you know this is when our committee like really grills you on <laughs> what what you've done so I'm kind of stressed out about that and just like you know there's just grad school struggles and things like that in general and it's kind of losing my shit a little bit but uh, yeah so you know I'm trying to do at least one video per week and hopefully you know everybody is, is understanding that I can't always do my two videos a week like normal but Hopefully I can get back into the swing of things soon. But anyway, let's go through these these books and like always we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. So part of this wrap up is actually going to include my wrap up for the uh, owls, like the magical readathon going on. So this is like a Harry Potter themed readathon where you can you, you sit for your owls exams and you know there's different subjects and you take which owls that you'll need to do the newts in the fall, I think, and I've decided to go for a magizoologist, and I've done some of like the extra, I don't know, seminars and trainings and things like that, so I'll just mention like which book goes with which prompt, uh, and I did, ended up doing seven prompts. So the first book I'll talk about that I rated two stars is Tuesday Mooney Talks the Ghost by Kate Merculia, so this was weird. <laughs> so basically here, uh, this guy named Vincent Price, but not like the actual Vincent Price. Uh, Price is P-R-Y-C-E instead of P-R-I-C-E. Um, but he dies and leaves his fortune available to people to like basically do a treasure hunt. And the kind of reminded, the premise reminded me of Ready Player One, but like <laughs> this was not really the same at all. Um, so basically I thought it was just not really funny and I didn't think it was super enjoyable. Uh, the characters themselves were okay, but I didn't really fully love them. For a book that was like, you know, supposedly about finding this guy's treasure, I didn't really feel like there was as much treasure hunting as I expected. Like, I thought this would be a fun, you know, hunt through the city to find the clues. And like, you know, there's some of that, but not as much as I thought. I don't know. It was, it was just kind of weird. Um, also, like, for the title saying talks to ghosts that like the lack of talking to ghosts was kind of <laughs> a problem I guess like I don't know there's there's a little bit of that kind of involved but it's not like nearly as much as the, the title would imply. It mostly deals with like the characters lives and we get some like hints of um, murders and things like that but it just like generally wasn't super exciting. Um, so this was fulfilled the prompt of Care of Magical Creatures which was had like you had to read a book that had a creature with a beak on the cover and there's like a little bird right here. So yeah I wouldn't personally recommend this. I didn't enjoy it and just thought it was bizarre. The next two star book that I'll talk about is In the Shadow of Vesuvius by Tasha Alexander. So I had won an arc of this and a Goodreads giveaway from the publisher a little bit ago. Um, and this is like the 14th or something book in this series. But basically here, our main character, Lady Emily, finds a dead body in uh, the ruins of Pompeii and inves investigates this murder at an archaeology site, basically. Um, so we also have the second timeline in like, 79 AD that follows Cassandra, who is a slave as she kind of like writes poems and deals with uh, friends and betrayals and things like that. Um, so I thought these storylines would be a lot more connected and like based on the synopsis on the back of the book, like, you know, it's, it talks about how Lady Emily's investigation sets into motion a, like a chain of events that ties her future to the fate of another woman whose body had lain undisturbed for nearly 2000 years. And like, yes, there, that is true. There is some of that, but I thought that 
this, there would be like much more of a connection through the entire book and really it like didn't come up until the very end. It basically read like two completely different stories that eventually tie together and that's just like wasn't really what I was into I guess. Um, I much preferred the storyline with Cassandra and um, I thought that was just much more interesting than Emily and her investigation. Uh, I basically would have read and much again much preferred a book solely focused on Cassandra and like I really just didn't give a shit about Emily <laughs> at all. It's kind of a shame because Cassandra, we only get to see like snippets of her story and it's, it's like literally like a page or two um, spread out between the chapters with Lady Emily. I'm not really interested in continuing the series. I, I will say like jumping in in book 14, I really didn't have a problem figuring out who everyone was and like granted I'm sure I missed out on like the relationships between these people and character development that has occurred over the previous books, but like, you know, for, for jumping in so late into the game, like, I, I think it was fine. So this one fulfilled the prompt of arithmancy, which was to read something outside your favorite genre, which like, my favorite genre is fantasy, and this is like a historical fiction murder mystery, so, you know, it, it counted for that. <laughs> so now we get into the three star book range, and the first book I'll talk about is The Sight by Chloe Neal. And the second book in an urban fantasy series called The Devil's Isle series, I guess. Um, and this basically is like uh, kind of post-apocalyptic-ish and set in New Orleans. Basically what had happened was that there's like some sort of paranormal war that occurred like seven or so years before the events of this book. Um, and we have various like supernatural creatures like uh, there's definitely like angels and demons. So then the magic in this world is that humans are can be like sensitives and um, Claire, the main character, is one of these sensitives and she has to be really careful about using her powers because basically what happens if um, sensitives overuse their powers or like refuse to use their powers, I don't know, there's like a very careful balance they have to strike. Um, they become these things called wraiths which are basically like kind of mindless zombie type creatures where your personality is just destroyed and you are only living to like consume more magic basically and they're, they're kind of mindless creatures of destruction. Uh, these paranormals are locked into the Devil's Isle which is kind of like this walled district area in New Orleans. So in this particular book uh, our main character Claire joins with the bounty hunter Liam uh, to fight off a cult of humans who are trying to kill off all of these paranormal creatures. I don't think that the series is as strong as her Chicago Land Vampire series, but it's still pretty enjoyable. I like the setting quite a bit. Uh, you know, it's cool to be in, in New Orleans, and I like this concept of like the you know post-apocalyptic sort of setting, I guess, and uh, just how you know overusing magic or not using it enough can kind of like <laughs> wreak havoc on on humans. Claire herself is pretty interesting. At, you know, this, this cult setting was also interesting and alarming. Uh, I liked the storyline that develops here, and you know I feel like that is a it's a big problem that, that we you know we have to fight against in the book. So it's it's like a, a motivating uh, bad guy, I guess. However, like I guess there's something about these books that is just like not, not quite there for me, and, and I'm not exactly sure what it is. Like the side characters themselves are mostly fleshed out, I think, but. I maybe just like don't fully connect with them and I don't know if that's the reasoning behind like why I can't why I don't like it as much as her other series uh, you know like I might like the main character quite a bit I will say like it does kind of take a bit to for the story to really get going so and the next book I'll talk about is The Hunt which is the third book in the Devil's Isle series and this is also a three star rating for me so basically here our uh, that bounty hunter Liam is framed for murder of a government agent and they basically like uncover a threat and they're still kind of dealing with this cult that comes up in book two. Um, and this is, again, the same sort of thing as, as I mentioned for the site. Uh, it takes a bit to get going, but, you know, at the end, I'm like ultimately invested in you know, finding out what happens and continuing the story. The plot points in this one felt a little bit thrown together. Like there's this plague storyline that like kind of comes up, but only a little bit. Uh, there's this one character, Eleanor, who I wish we could spend more time with. But basically, she's a sensitive, I think, and she is blind, but she can like see magic and like she sees like auras, I think, and like in different colors for different types of magic. So I, I think that's like a really interesting idea. And like, I don't know, she's just kind of like a sassy grandmother. <laughs> I wish we could see more of her. The ending is definitely like, oh God, oh no, things are not going well. And you know, it certainly doesn't bode well for the future. I want to know what happens with it, even though, you know, I'm not 
fully into these this series as much. It's, it's, it's very strange. It's hard to like describe what it is. Like while I'm reading it or while I was reading like most of these books, it's kind of like, okay, you know, this is good, not great. And then by the end, it's like, okay, you know, like I, I want to keep reading these. So I don't know. I don't really know how to describe that. But anyway, um, again, like I guess with the side characters, I we get some new side characters and like to be honest I can't keep them all straight in my mind and so that like kind of made some for some confusing moments where I was like who is this person again <laughs> I don't know um but yeah so this is like this is a decent urban fantasy series again I don't think it's as good as her Chicago Logan Vampire series but I am interested in finishing up the series the next three star book I'll talk about is The Sinister Mystery of the Mesmerizing Girl by Theodora Goss so this is the third and final book in the Athena Club trilogy um, so basically, I've mentioned this trilogy before, it's kind of like a historical urban fantasy series almost where we follow like daughters or like created creatures of classic horror monsters and villains. So we have like um, the daughter of Dr. Jekyll, we have the daughter of Mr. Hyde, which so obviously they're like sisters, <laughs> but have like wildly different personalities, so that's kind of interesting. Um, there's like a, a lady, Frankenstein, there's... I don't know, just there's like a, a poisonous girl who was created. So I don't know, just a lot of really intriguing people. The storylines are, I think the first one had something to do with Jack the Ripper, if I'm remembering correctly. The second one had something to do with Dracula. And then this one is kind of like a loose retelling, I guess, of the mummy and supposedly Alice in Wonderland, though, like I. I'll fully admit I didn't completely see the Alice in Wonderland storyline other than the fact that one of the characters is named Alice. Um, but anyway, so Alice, the maid, ends up being kidnapped and so has Sherlock Holmes. And so that's kind of like another thing that comes up in this series. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are involved and like Mary Jekyll kind of helps Sherlock with some investigations and things like that. The whole Athena Club is trying to find them and uh, they eventually uncover this plot to kind of like overthrow Queen Victoria and so they have to like save the British Empire. Um, so I didn't think that this was a particularly strong conclusion to the series, uh, which was kind of a bummer. Uh, looking back at my Goodreads ratings, and it seems like I rated the second book the highest, but I seem to remember thinking that the first book was the most interesting book of the series. So I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> such is life with like trying to remember why I rated books certain things on Goodreads. Um, but anyway, yeah, like I was kind of bored while reading it and I, I did have quite a bit of trouble keeping track of everybody and where they all were and where they're all going because uh, like at the beginning of the book um, we have different groups of the Athena Club members kind of in different locations based on like, you know, where they ended up in the, after the second book and it just like didn't fully come together for me, I guess. And I was like, I don't know, I don't know where everyone is at all. Supposedly one of the characters actually wrote these books and is like trying to sell them and get people to read them and, and everything. So like every now and then members of the, uh, the Athena Club will kind of like, I don't know, interject comments and, and, and things like that to comment on the story as I think one of the characters is like reading it to them. I didn't think it was quite as funny this time. Like the first book it was, you know, amusing and then the second book it, maybe started to get, I, th I feel like the second book it was still amusing but maybe a little tedious and then this book I was like okay I just I don't really enjoy this anymore. Going back to the premise of the story which I kind of mentioned was like generally an Alice in Wonderland and the mummy retelling type thing. I really did like the, the mummy part. We have a, a lady mummy so that was that was kind of cool. I still generally like the idea behind this series and I do like the characters but just you know I, don't, I didn't I don't think it was the best installment in particular. So the last of the three star books I'll talk about is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. So this is a close circle murder mystery and this takes place in the Scottish wilderness. So basically the premise here is that a group of college friends go to this like lodge area for a New Year's party and then you know they're kind of like starting to grow apart but they're still like trying to hang out with each other. Uh, one of the friends is a murderer and one of them dies. So we do have two timelines. There's you know a few days before as they like arrive at this this lodge area and like we're get, kind of getting settled and we see just their interactions and then we follow a few days after after you know like the one of the members has disappeared. I think this was decent. I didn't expect the ending to be what it was so like in terms of being a mystery and like keeping me on my toes it succeeded um, but I like basically throughout the entire book I had no clue what was actually going on and 
who died until it was like really late. So, you know, like, I don't know if that's partly me just not picking up on things or if it was in fact like hard to determine what happened. I did feel like it was more about the group and like the drama than actually solving a murder. And, and you know, like I, on one hand, I realize you kind of have to like establish motive for murdering somebody, but at the same time, it got a little tedious to read about these like really stuck up people and all their stupid drama. I didn't think any of the characters were particularly likable. I did enjoy it. I just don't think it was necessarily the most memorable mystery and certainly not the best close circle murder mystery I've ever read. So now we get into the three and a half star books. And the first book I'll talk about here is Tyrannosaur Canyon by Douglas Preston. So this for the owls fulfilled the charms prompt, which was to read a book with a white cover. Um, so this is kind of like a adventure action novel where uh, we essentially have this like missing moon rock and um, a valuable T-Rex skeleton. So um, this guy gets murdered and uh, this kind of like kicks off a race to find the treasure. Um, so this was I think a fun in general uh, action adventure. I did like that it took place in the American Southwest. Uh, there like happened to be a character in here who had, this, who had the same last name as me and so I was like oh that's kind of cool. Uh, two of the main characters Tom and Sally I thought were you know like pretty enjoyable main characters. Um, I did like how Tom is trying to like keep his promises throughout the book and also kind of save Sally from some things that happened to her. Um, we do have a point of view from the villain who just like absolutely fucking sucks. He is the worst and you know he uses a whole bunch of derogatory terms and just like is really unpleasant to read about so just like be aware going into that that you know he's a piece of shit. So what's strange to me is that this is like supposedly the first book in the Wyman Ford series and like he's just kind of a side character and I don't know I guess I thought that this would be just like much more focused on him and that he would be our main character so I don't know if like in the other books uh, this, this character Tom comes back at all or if we're more focused on Wyman Ford and this was maybe just like an introduction to the setting and I don't know. Generally I liked the science here. We also have a shady government agency. I don't think this particular book is as good as some of their other books. So he writes a lot of books with Lincoln Childs and I've enjoyed some of them and I feel like they both individually write some of their own books in. But I still enjoyed it and would recommend it if this is kind of like, if this premise sounds interesting to you. The next three and a half star book I'll talk about is My Lady Jane by Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. So for the owls this fulfilled the prompt of Herbology which is read a book where the title starts with M so obviously my starts with M. Um, so anyway, this is essentially pitched as the Tudors meets Monty Python and I thought that was like fairly accurate <laughs> uh, and I definitely liked that premise. Um, so basically this is kind of like a retelling of Lady Jane Grey and she is the cousin to uh, the king who is Edward Tudor and she has to marry, uh, I think his name is Gifford Dudley if I'm remembering that right, um, but she like kind of gets caught up in a lot of politics and schemes. So this is like also in like retelling history we're kind of in this like alternative world where people can shape shift into animals so for instance um g who is gifford who is like her husband um is generally a horse most of the time and like henry the eighth used to be able to shape shift into a lion so that like, I don't know. I thought that was a fun touch. I think this was pretty funny overall and I did enjoy the mashup of like history with shape-shifting and just like humorous situations. There were certainly some actual nods to Monty Python in here, like particularly uh, with the Holy Grail. There were some insults that were basically taken exactly from uh, the French castle scene. <laughs> you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so I, I enjoyed that. I thought that was clever. Uh, I, I did like Jane quite a bit. She is like really into reading so naturally I felt like she was relatable. Uh, she's very headstrong and outspoken which is like, I don't know, I just find that sort of personality in a book to be pretty entertaining. Uh, I liked this turn of events for her. Things go a little bit better than actual history. I did like the romance that developed between her and her husband. I thought that felt very natural. Uh, Edward the King has a fairly nice character arc of like kind of learning that he's not actually the center of the world even though he is king. <laughs> this was just a fun a fun book and you know if, if the Tudors meets Monty Python sounds interesting to you I, I would recommend picking it up. The last three and a half star book I'll talk about is We Read the Storm by Devin Madsen. So I had won an advanced copy of this um, from a giveaway that the author actually did on Twitter. Uh, so that was that was certainly cool. This comes out in 
uh, June of this year. I don't know if that's been pushed back or not. Um, so this is evidently 17 years after rebels kind of like stormed the streets uh, of this, this empire. And I didn't realize this, but the author actually has a prior series, which I think follows this rebellion. This empire is kind of having some issues and it's, uh, there's lots of strife. It's ruled by a god emperor. Um, and then the alliance with a neighboring country it kind of gets destroyed. And so these empire countries or whatever are at war. So we follow three different characters here. We have a, a princess um, of this empire. Then we follow a guy who is um, like a part of this nomadic horse people culture. <laughs> um, and then we follow another uh, female character, Cassandra, who is kind of like a possessed assassin. Lots of politics, betrayals, and death. Uh, I thought, it, like, I mostly enjoyed it, but I think for me, the different points of view were wildly unbalanced. Like, I much preferred the princess's storyline almost to the detriment of the others. Like, I, it kind of was a little tedious to read some, through some of the other points of view. I felt like I didn't really understand what was going on with Cassandra's storyline. Like, I, basically, like, I, I still don't have a good sense of, like, who or like what is happening with her like what is possessing her is this actually a possession like what what all, I don't know I, I just mostly felt kind of confused and I didn't really enjoy Cassandra herself and um, the other this like nomadic horse dude was okay he like I think is trying to be honorable and like doing what's best for his people like kind of getting them home and like taking care of them but things aren't really going well for him and I don't know I just I just really didn't like him or connect with him. Um, but the princess, on the other hand, she is kind of like secretly badass and she's skilled at archery and she's very intelligent. I think she's supposed to be like 16 or, you know, like fairly young. There's definitely a lot of like scheming and politics, particularly through her story. And we also have this other character who pops up mostly through Cassandra's storylines, but also kind of in some of the others. But this dude is kind of like some sort of priest and he's the son of a hieromonk, which is kind of interesting, but he kind of seems to have some supernatural powers and like be able to, and he can maybe read other people's minds. So like, I don't know, I thought that was interesting, but really that's kind of and like that and Cassandra's possible possession are like the only real magic, I think, in this world, or at least in this book. Um, I don't know if that will come up later on, but then this is certainly more of a fantasy that's much more focused on, you know, being a grimdark and lots of war and battles and things like that. Uh, the ending was pretty surprising though, so I, you know, obviously think that the, the ending was quite strong and I appreciated that for sure. Again, definitely some really dark moments overall. There's certainly some like content warnings, let's see if I can remember them all. There's, uh, there's some rape that happens. There's also just like, it, it gets pretty gory. Um, for instance, this like nomadic horse people culture, uh, they believe that like the head is kind of where your soul resides. So when people die, they have to like cut off their heads in order to release the soul. So you like see that pretty graphically on page. So, you know, if that's something that you don't really want to read about, I would, I would say like, maybe this isn't the book for you, but overall I did enjoy it. And I would be interested in at least continuing to see what happens with the, like the princess's storyline. So now we get into the four star books. And the first book I'll talk about here is The Woman in the Mirror by Rebecca James. So I did win an advanced copy of this through a Goodreads giveaway, but um, I think it has, I mean, it says it was on sale in Mar mid March, and I assume that that actually happened. But this, um, for the owls, this fulfilled the prompt of History of Magic, which was a book featuring witches and wizards. So we, this is a like gothic thriller type book where we have two different storylines and in the earlier storyline which is in like 1947 we follow Alice Miller who becomes the governess at this house Winterborn uh, to these twins of this this captain guy I think so the twins are initially like really welcoming but they eventually turn on her and like the father becomes like pretty mean towards her um, and then like the house itself starts to reject her but then we also have this present day storyline where we follow Rachel who learns that she is, um, she like has inherited Winterborn and she is kind of like starting to learn about the history of her family and the house itself. 
thought this was quite delightful and creepy. Uh, there were certainly some like really creepy moments, particularly one scene that involved some figures on the beach. It was just like, oh god, <laughs> I don't know, which is kind of creepy. And um, I think this was a, a really great gothic horror type book. You know, I thought it was quite interesting to kind of watch Alice's descent into madness um, and just like to see how her experiences change throughout the book where it's kind of, you know, at the beginning it's like, oh, things are going well. And then we learn more about her and just like her past. And then, you know, obviously we have everybody turning against her and just she, she kind of starts to go a little crazy. Um, I definitely feel bad for her, though. Uh, Rachel is also interesting. At first, I thought she was kind of standoffish, but... Um, I think she did get better with time and I liked how independent she was and how she like stood up for herself. There is an involvement of a witch in this book and I, I, I think I won't say how she's involved but I did really appreciate that aspect. I thought it tied everything together really well and I definitely liked how it ended. The next book I'll talk about for this or star rating is Smoke Bitten by Patricia Biggs. So this is the I don't know, something book in the Mercy Thompson series. Um, for the Owls, this fulfilled the prompt of Transfiguration, which was to read a book or series that includes shapeshifting. So obviously Mercy, the main character, is a coyote shapeshifter, but in this world this is an urban fantasy where we have like a lot of werewolves, and this particular plot involved a shapeshifting creature who was up to no good. So basically what has happened is this fae creature, who is the shapeshifter, escapes from Underhill, which is where a whole bunch of like the fae ha had lived until it kicked them out. Um, and this creature can control people by biting them and it essentially lives for like death and destruction and Mercy obviously like has to fight it off and protect her family and the pack and like the city in general. <laughs> obviously I love this series but I don't think that this was uh, my favorite plot in particular for all these books. Uh, there was a lot of drama with Adam um, who is Mercy's love interest like I thought it was kind of a little stressful to read about, I, and to be honest, I like don't fully remember what has happened in previous books, so like it could be partially me not remembering how things left off in the last book, but I kind of was like thrown into it and I was like, I, I don't remember their real, like relationship being in trouble this much, uh, so that was kind of surprising to me, I guess. I do think it sets up a, a plot for the future books that deals with a lot of like the Fae and Underhill more, so... You know, that, I think that'll be interesting, but this felt kind of almost like a, a it's, I mean, I, I don't want to say it was like a filler book, but uh, because I, I do feel like there were still things going on, you know, I, maybe it just like wasn't as action packed as some of the other books or as engaging as some of the other books, but I still really like Mercy and I like seeing her, you know, try to solve the mystery of what's going on and like get help from her allies and everything like that. So like, you know. I'm going to keep reading this series. I still would recommend it. Uh, this just wasn't my particular favorite book in the series, but I am like, I still rated it four stars, so I still really enjoyed it. The next four star book I'll talk about is Thor the Goddess of Thunder by Jason Aaron. This is like the first installment of the uh, Lady Thor comics, and for the Owls this fulfilled the prompt of potions, which is to read a book under 150 pages. So this is like, I don't know, 113 or something like that. So basically the story here is that Thor is no longer worthy to re wield Mjolnir. Um, so this mysterious woman ends up becoming the goddess of thunder instead. And meanwhile, uh, frost giants are invading Midgard and um, to look for an item. They are allied with Malekith, who is I think the king of the Dark Elves. So this was awesome. I thought the new Thor showed that she was like pretty badass and I really enjoyed seeing like her thoughts and commentary as she do does things because like basically like her thoughts are like surprisingly relatable but then like when she's actually speaking this is kind of like an influ influence from Mjolnir uh, but she kind of like has to speak formally uh, but her thoughts are like not formal at all <laughs> so I don't know I just thought that was interesting. Everybody is like trying to figure out who she is. Odin in particular is like really not happy that there is a female Thor and there's a whole bunch of like commentary throughout this about like Lady Thor versus Thor and just like how female superheroes are kind of you know there's a lot of you know like Lady Hulk or something like that like why do we have to qualify superheroes by saying like Lady whatever so I, I just appreciated the commentary on that I thought that was quite cleverly done I definitely want to continue this I think I'm not entirely sure but I think that there is 
only maybe only two volumes of this like Thor Goddess of Thunder line and then there seems to be like a whole nother set of comics that follow this lady Thor so I don't know I'm not entirely sure what the situation is there but I am interested in, in continuing I thought this was really clever I thought this was funny so the next book I'll talk about is for the four star rating is Crier's War by Nina Varela so uh, this is basically kind of I mean, I thought it was sci-fi, but it's more of like a fantasy with sci-fi elements, I would say. Basically, what has happened in this world is that there was a war between humans and the Otome, I think, which are kind of like these created robots and like artificial intelligence. Uh, so they were, these robots were like originally created to be like pets of the these royals, um, but then they kind of rebel and take over and then the humans become the slaves instead. So we follow Ayla, who is a human servant, and her family was murdered by these Otome, and she wants to kill Lady Cryer, who is like the daughter of this sovereign um, Otome, and she wants to do, kill her off for revenge. So then we also follow Lady Cryer, who again is this, this daughter, uh, she's an Otome, and she wants to be involved in politics, but she kind of gets dismissed. And we both of them kind of like end up being involved in I guess I didn't entirely buy the relationship, like, I think that they had some chemistry, but like, one of the characters being like, oh, I love you, was a little too premature, and I guess I could have just used like more of a slow burn relationship development here, but I did enjoy the, the chemistry between them, and I was, I was here for it, for sure. Um, I really liked, again, I've kind of mentioned this before, but I really like books that kind of explore what it means to be human, and can artificial intelligence be human, so we definitely get that here. Um, I liked this whole rebellion and just like plots and scheming that happens. Uh, I thought that Ayla and Cryer were both motivating and very interesting characters. I'm definitely interested in continuing the story to see what happens that like certainly didn't go how I expected, so I liked being kept on my toes. The last of the four star books is The Last Imperox by John Scalzi, though interestingly enough I think I saw on Twitter the other day that he meant for this to be pronounced Impero instead of Imperox, and I was like, I mean, Huh, okay. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm still gonna pronounce it Imperox, I guess. Um, so this is the last book in this interdependency trilogy, and essentially the plot here is that there's this like flow connecting worlds and solar systems, um, but this is collapsing, and so it's like cutting off people from supplies and, you know, humanity. So that's not great. So there's kind of this race to find a solution and to save everybody. So in this particular book, we have a lot of nobles scheming to save themselves and not necessarily save other people. I think it was mostly satisfying, but I still have some unanswered questions, which is a little bit of a bummer since this is the last book in the series. There were some like really shocking moments that happened that I just like straight up didn't believe for quite a bit of time until I was like, okay, that, that actually did happen. All right. I really like uh, the Imperox Greyland or you know, like her normal name is Cardinia, I think, and uh, you know, I really like reading from her point of view. I think she's like pretty relatable and, you know, intelligent and I don't know, I, I just find her very amusing. And a lot of the other side characters are also amusing. We follow like Kiva, I think her name is. Um, she likes to swear a lot. So, you know, like if that's something that you don't particularly enjoy reading about, like she is very foul mouthed. So <laughs> just be aware of that going into it. But I, I found her kind of amusing and she's like, she is a master schemer, it's, it's kind of cool. There were definitely some sections of like really dry and like very, I guess like scientific and I guess like almost economic sections. So that kind of, I don't know, it made it a little bit hard to get started. And like to be uh, fair, again, I didn't remember entirely what happened in the previous books. Like I remember some of it, but like it, it did take me a little bit to get into this. But overall, I did enjoy this trilogy. So now we get into the four and a half star books. And the first book I'll talk about here is The Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher. So this takes place in North, like rural North Carolina. And, you know, I just want to say I'm so glad that I read this where I did because, like, you know, we live in kind of like a, a city urban area, but like my fiance's parents have um, a house that's kind of like out in the woods, well, kind of near where this is supposed to, to take place. And so I was like, I'm so glad that I didn't read this, read this while I was there because I would have been like super freaked out. But anyway, the premise here is that the main character, Mouse, was clean out her dread, dead grandma's house and her grandma turns out to have been a hoarder. So this is like not an easy task. So while she's doing this, she finds her step-grandfather's journal 
that seems to be like some ramblings of a madman. Then she starts to encounter some of the things that this journal has mentioned in the woods and uh, kind of has to deal with them. So I think that this was a perfect blend of humor and horror. Uh, Mouse herself was just like really funny and uh, just there were multiple times where I was like actually laughing at what she said. She also has a dog companion, Bongo, who is, you know, not the, not the smartest paparoo, but uh, he's, he's definitely a good companion. So <laughs> I really, I really liked seeing that as well. And there's some like really creepy scenes in here. There's particularly one that happens at a window and it's just like, oh my God, I'm so glad I'm reading this during the day. The yeah. twisted ones themselves and these like rocks <laughs> are like surprisingly creepy and just like some of the descriptions it's like oh god oh, I don't like that uh, there's some other really great side characters like we have Foxy who, who's this really quirky lady and I really just liked ha seeing her help out and I don't know she was she was pretty amusing the uh so I think what made it like a four and a half star read instead of a five star read for me was that I felt like the ending was maybe a little disjointed or kind and kind of odd and like not as strong as the rest of the book but like overall I still really liked it I would recommend it I'm definitely interested in picking up other books by T. Kingfisher who is uh, you know, an alias for Ursula Vernon if you did. so then the other four and a half star book I'll talk about is The Last Days of Jack Sparks by Jason Arnott so I did this as a buddy read with Rachel from the Shades of Orange um so this is a horror book where Jack Sparks died while supposedly writing this book and he was researching the occult for this this book it's like jack sparks on the supernatural and he essentially starts off by like mocking this exorcism of a girl on twitter and this creates like a huge i don't know twitter storm of just like people being like oh how, how dare you you know do this or like some people agreeing with him and thinking that he's funny and then he has this video that's like mysteriously posted on his own youtube account but he's like i didn't create this how did this get here this book is generally like kind of like a behind the scenes of what actually happened i thought this was really enjoyable uh, jack himself is like an asshole he is not sympathetic but um we're not really meant to like him so this is okay for me and i think the writing is just like really engaging and funny so there's definitely a lot of things going on uh the ending is pretty strong i think so i certainly appreciated that um I did guess some of the things that happened, but certainly not all. I, I think the author did a really great job of like leaving us little like pieces and, and hints throughout the book of, of things. And like I don't want to say too much to spoil things if, if you do want to read it, but um, I think he this was just like very cleverly done. I'd be kind of interested in rereading this and being able to like go back and see like okay can I like pick up on these things earlier or Jack certainly starts off as being like really st skeptical of the occult. I liked reading from that point of view and like seeing how his, his character arc develops through the book. Uh, there's definitely some like really brutal moments and certainly the YouTube video itself is like pretty creepy so we've got some you know, some good moments here for if you're looking for like a, a great horror book and like I think the thing that like Jack Sparks and the Twisted Ones I think that like really worked for me is like it's a nice blend of horror but humor and like sarcasm and, and so the last book I'll talk about today is a five star read for me and that is The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal so this is kind of like an alternate history sci-fi book where in 1952, this meteorite falls and basically wipes out Washington, D.C. And, and most of the East Coast on the U.S. And this is kind of like an extinction event, like what has happened with the dinosaurs. So then this kind of like kicks off this space race where, you know, obviously they need to be able to colonize space because the Earth will eventually become uninhabitable. So we follow Elma York, who is a pilot and a mathematician. So she's like actually one of these computers. Uh, as she works in this like international aerospace coalition uh, and she like starts to wonder why women can't be astronauts as well so i think th i thought that this was really great uh, it did take a lot of inspiration i think from like these actual real life women who were the computers and like you know hidden figures kind of mm, talks about them in real life and you know i just really enjoy seeing women who are good at math because like obviously I'm in biostats <laughs> so I do a lot of math myself and I just really like reading from the point of view from somebody who like from a female character who also loves math obviously this is like an alternate history type book but it does deal a lot I think or it does have a lot of discussion about like the sexism and racism during the time period of like you know what had actually happened in the U.S. 
So like Elma is obviously like aware of sexism, but racism she's not quite aware of as much, but like this she kind of develops this sen sense of, you know, racial inequality over time. So she what I thought was really interesting about her is that she really struggles with anxiety, in particular like being in front of a whole bunch of people and like she is very concerned with like doing what's proper and she'll get so anxious that it kind of like causes her to throw up sometimes. I think what the book does really well is that there's this nice discussion of like therapy and um, taking medications if for anxiety and I thought that that was well done because like she is kind of like embarrassed about having to take these medication or this this medication but uh, a lot of the other characters are like no it's totally fine like it really like there's nothing to be ashamed about so I think that that was very nicely done like you know people should be able to get the help that they need you know like I thought her anxiety about being in front of people was really relatable like you know my I do get really bad stage fright I guess and like while it's not as severe as Elma's anxiety like I do I do really hate presenting in front of people I liked just reading about the other ladies as well like you know I we only get the point of view from Elma and I feel like it would be nice to get the point of view from some of the other ladies as well. I'm like really invested in Elma's journey and um, I would say that there are perhaps some triggers here like you know obviously at the beginning this meteorite uh, falls to the earth and like kills a whole bunch of people so like it's pretty sad to read about so if that's like something that might make you uncomfortable uh, particularly I guess right now like uh, you know obviously we're dealing with a different kind of problem but um, than a meteorite falling to earth but you know if it's something that wouldn't be good for your mental health to read like you know obviously like wait until a, a time when it would be good but I do really recommend this book and I am very much interested in continuing the story. So there was my mid-month wrap-up for April. I think I actually had 17 books to tell instead of the 16 that I think I mentioned at the beginning of the, the video but um, yeah it's you know like a fairly good reading month for me so far. So I did complete my the owls that I wanted to so you know that was that was that was fun certainly I'll uh, leave some of that information down in the description if you want to you know participate. There's still a little bit of time left in the month if she at, at Book Rose created this and like she sp certainly spent like a lot of time and effort creating this and just like you know the sheer amount of, of Harry Potter career options you can choose from is, is really cool. It's kind of interesting this in this part of the month I seem to be focused or reading more like darker books I guess which is kind of interesting compared to like you know the end of March when I was focusing on like lighter reads I guess <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know I was in the mood for more intense things this month I guess. So let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up. Um, for your question of the day let's go with uh, do you like Monty Python? <laughs> um, I certainly do. Uh, I think you know the Holy Grail is probably my favorite of their actual movies but you know the Flying Circus has a lot of really great skits. Um, but anyway with that, uh, I hope you're having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.